The third thing is as we go down the path, uh, how are systems going to be put together? And, and, and I argue that systems will have three bullets on the roadmap. One will be I design it onto a printed circuit board. Then once I have a printed circuit board, I should be able to stack a device, stack devices, or put them all in, a, in, the, in one package. So I'll do system in package. And then the final step will be system on a chip. Uh, I argue very carefully that system on a chip is not the end because you can never do a system on a chip. All you can really do is a subsystem on a chip. Uh, if you've heard me before, I've given a simple example of, a, of that, and that is when I hired into TI, we were doing calculators, and our goal was a single chip calculator. Although we accomplished it, in fact, it has never been accomplished because we have never integrated the keyboard, the display, or the battery onto the chip. And, and I'm just fairly certain a calculator needs a keyboard, a display, and a battery to function. And so that's the system. Mm -hmm. And so what we really did in a single chip calculator is create a subset, a, 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 a subsystem on a chip. The rest of the system was on the printed circuit board. And so I think that's certainly, and the reason I say that is not to say we're in trouble. The reason I say that is I find it interesting every time we end up with this SOC, we find somebody figuring out how to use it in a bigger system. And that's really good news. That says we will continue to have this growth of the industry by the cycling. That really leads us to the complexity that, that, that goes on, and that is we have this very complex thing called a, uh, an SOC. On top of it, we have all of this required software and development environment and OS which is really nothing more than the software development tools so that the system designer can do their thing and that is create the system level software that is what's going to drive the system. Uh, and so when we look at the development environment, look on the right hand side of this, we find out that that development environment has to do a lot of things. Uh, it has to understand the high level languages. It has to understand both the analog and the digital side of the system. We can no longer be doing that separately. Uh, it has to understand what are the components underneath it so they take advantage of them. And finally, it has to know what parts of the system can be parallelized and what parts cannot. Now, I, I've used the term Amdahl's Law. Uh, if you're not familiar with Amdahl's Law, you can go to the, the uh, Wikipedia and look it up. But Amdahl's Law basically talks about if I cannot parallelize a task, putting more resources on it does not make it work faster. And so there are just those things, most real world signals of which the DSPs can handle are very parallelizable. And many of the system level things are not. And so that compiler needs to know which is which and how to handle both. So that's the complexity of the compiler. If you talk to uh, researchers in the area of compilers, they will tell you it is impossible to build a compiler we need for multiprocessing, which I find fun. If it's not impossible, why try? Let's look at power consumption. As we begin to lower power consumption, it's obvious if I lower the consumption of power in half, I can either have twice the battery life or a battery half the size. Uh, that becomes important as I begin to take things that I see on desks and put them in my pocket. Uh, and perhaps as I take them out of my pocket and just weave them into my uh, clothing or make them a part of me. So as we go more and more personal, the idea is how do I lengthen the battery life? How do I reduce the weight and size of my system? What that let me go back to that. What that really says is there's this end goal of the perpetual device where I don't have to worry about power ever again. It just does its thing. If I also look at another implication, it is that more and more the innovation is in the system, not in the components. Uh, on the left you see the example of the car. Uh, the first drivers of automobiles needed to know how to repair their engines. 
because sooner or later you're going to have to stop on the side of the road and do that. Now our cars are reliable enough and understood well enough that we as drivers don't have to understand how to repair the car in other words, and, and able to use the system. And uh, we will see this interesting phenomena that system designers won't have to know as much about the components to do their system design. Now if you hear that, you, you begin to say, well then, TI, everything you're doing is kind of the commodity, who cares? But let me go to the next slide, which is uh, my favorite slide. It has, food, it has to do with food. Hey, food is good. Yeah. Uh, and, and so let me give you an example of the commodity of this picture. Do you notice what the commodity is? The dishes. Uh, the, 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 the bamboo steamers, those are all commodity. You don't need that to have the food. But if somebody just came and dumped all that food on your table, it wouldn't look good and it wouldn't really be an easy way to eat it. And, and so even though the intellectual property in this case is all that wonderful food, make you hungry? I hope you didn't skip lunch. Uh, that's what I had for lunch today. So uh, I, I, I can look at it and smile and remember a good lunch. Uh, but you need to have the dishes to make it work. And so although the future, remember I said, remember that earlier slide, the future will be in not the software, or the, 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 the value will not be in the software or hardware. It will be in how the software and hardware is used. In the same way, the, the value here is not in the dishes, but the value is in how the dishes are used. And so that's how we will see in the future uh, the, the relationship. So that really leads me to one last slide, and it, and it really ends up being a quick summary. Uh, and that is, the fun is just beginning. Uh, if you've heard me talk before, or you always hear me kind of end with the fun is just beginning. Uh, I don't think we'll come to the end of the fun that we can see with technology impacting the way uh, we live, learn, and play. Uh, there's a second thing, and that is, uh, as you heard me say earlier, I don't think technology will be the limiting item. I believe we will have, be able to provide more technology than our system users can use. But there's a third thing, and that is, innovation is going to be the key to success. And, and what will nullify the second is good innovation at the system level that finds some things that we've never seen before. And, and makes us kick back in the gear to, to create better and better technology.